Welcome back to our last video on apologetics. It has been an absolute honor to walk you through the last few videos. For this last video, we are going to talk about one of the most fascinating theories I've come across. This particular theory has massive implications for how we view ourselves, the world, and God. This theory is known as the clockwork universe. Now, there are a couple of different applications of this particular theory, and I'll do my best to talk about how it started and then how we can approach it theologically. In its most simple sense, the clockwork universe is the idea that everything in existence was designed as a part of a massive mechanism that will always function in the way that it was intended and designed to function. The origin of the clockwork universe comes from Isaac Newton and the development of his laws of physics. Newton developed many ideas about how the physical world was designed and what was necessary for it to maintain its proper function. One of the most interesting things about Newton is that his faith in God informed a lot of how he went about his scientific study. Newton observed that nature seemed to have a set order in which it functioned. Gravity acted upon the planets, keeping them in orbit. The waves of the ocean were acted upon by forces to keep it in motion. Newton was able to observe so much of what happened in the natural world around him, but he admitted that the cause of these forces was still unknown to him. Newton once said, I have explained the phenomena of the heavens and of our sea by the force of gravity, but I have not yet assigned a cause to gravity. Throughout his study of science, Newton pointed to the fact that the universe operated as if it was a giant mechanism, with God as its master mechanic. As he developed this idea of a mechanized universe, Newton unlocked a lot of questions about the nature of time, space, and reality. For instance, Newton's observations caused many to question whether or not humanity had the ability to choose for itself, or if it was ultimately locked into a predetermined set of causes and effects. This short video helps explain this idea. What this means is that every object in the universe, from the dust floating around your room to the stars in the sky, are where they are as the result of the infinite number of forces acting upon them. Or in other words, everything is nothing more or less than the result of all of the causes that came before it, and all of those causes had causes, and those causes before them had causes, etc, etc, ad infinitum. We call this clockwork universe theory, and also Newtonian determinism and also mechanism. It's got a lot of names, his friends just call him Frank, it's a lot easier. Now Frank gets really interesting when you apply him to human beings. Classical physics tells us that every object in the universe acts as the result of all of the forces that came before it, and as much as we'd like to deny it, human beings are a part of the universe. We're no exception. When you say the word I, you're probably not referring to your arms or your legs or your kidneys or your spine. What you're referring to is everything going on up here. You're referring to the symbiosis of all of the different neurons in your brain all firing at once, making decisions and choices and reminding you to breathe. <gasps> well, all of those neurons in your head are firing in precisely the order that they are for the exact same reasons that the Earth orbits the sun and the die falls the way it does. It is the culmination of all of the forces that came before it. Everything that has ever happened and everything that ever will happen has been set in a perfect and unbreakable breakable sequence of causes and effects. Time is set in place. Now if every decision of our life, from ice cream preference to political affiliation, was decided at the beginning of time, does that mean we don't have free will? I don't think so. Just because the universe knows what decisions we're going to make, just as it knows how the die is going to land, doesn't make those decisions any less our own. What I like about this particular video is that it helps us understand how classical physics can help us understand free will and predestination. I do have to say, however, that he did mention the idea of just because the universe knows. Now this young man is a scientist, and he uses the language and understanding that he's been trained with. Now as a Christian, I agree with everything he said, except I would assign God in place of the universe. In other words, I do believe that God knows the outcome and effects of all the choices we could ever make, but we are free to make them for ourselves. Think of it like this. If you sit down to play a game of chess with God, you are able to freely choose your moves, but those moves are limited by the parameters of the game and its rules. In a similar way, the universe and time was set as the parameters of our reality, and we are free to choose our moves within those parameters. But we don't need to go down that existential rabbit hole just now. Let's get back to this idea of the clockwork universe and its implications. So we've talked a little bit about how Newton developed this idea of a mechanized universe, which works great for scientific observation, but runs into trouble when it is evaluated from a philosophic and theological lens. What I mean is that the clockwork universe helps explain a lot about forces in motion and how the universe functions as a whole, but when it is evaluated through a philosophic lens, it begins to fall a little flat. Here's why. The idea of the clockwork universe, when used as a philosophic foundation, states that because the universe was designed to function as a clock, 
That means the creator, God, is uninvolved in the affairs of creation. In other words, God is the master clockmaker who wound the clock up and is now hands off. According to the philosophic view of the clockwork universe, God is completely hands off in the trajectory of history. This idea also permeates a lot of theology as well, simply because it helps explain why we are in a state of suffering and why God seems to be absent from our lives. The clockwork universe, theologically speaking, is a way for us to cope with the fact that we face suffering on a daily basis and that when we cry out to God, we are often met with silence. Now you might be asking yourself what this has to do with apologetics, and that is a completely fair question. The clockwork universe is a way for secular thinkers to undermine much of the Christian message. For instance, because we do not have the ability to command God to appear at any given moment, many unbelieving people equate that God, if there is a God, is uncaring or uninterested in our pleas. Where is your God? is a common question that many unbelieving people will lob at Christians in order to force them into a situation where they have to prove the existence of God. For unbelieving people who agree that there is some higher power, this idea of the clockwork universe helps substantiate their view that intelligent design exists, but it has no bearing on our daily lives. For me, this entire idea of the clockwork universe has to run through the question, what about Jesus? Any questions that we as humanity can ever come up with about who we are the nature of the universe and the existence of reality must run through the person of Jesus. In terms of the clockwork universe, if God designed the universe to function in a specific way and then let it run its due course, then why was the life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus necessary? If God did indeed create the universe to function in a specific way, then why would God need to get involved by sending Jesus to die? The clockwork universe theory, when used as a philosophic or theological foundation, falls apart the more you get into the biblical narrative. God has been intimately involved in the lives of humanity since the dawn of creation, from making clothes for Adam and Eve as they left the garden to bringing the Israelites up out of Egypt. God has been intimately involved with the affairs of humanity throughout history. One of the many names of Jesus used in the Bible is Emmanuel, which means God with us. The person and life of Jesus proves the involvement of the Creator in our lives. God designed an intricate mechanism when the universe was created, but God is by no means absent from its daily functions. Thank you so much for joining me for these last few videos. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at the address on the screen. And remember, apologetics is a tool to be used to explain your faith, not a weapon to wield against an enemy. Thanks for watching.